Hey everyone, it's been a few days and the flu is finally done with me. Well, at least I hope it is. I hope you're all doing well as, uh, as well in these conditions. But listen, uh, you probably saw last week we launched the Regulation All-in-One Investment Platform. And today I'm just going to talk about uh, Regulation A Plus and the ways you as a company can raise capital. And there is no right or wrong way. We're not suggesting that we're the only solution. Not at all. That, that's not the premise. Keep this in mind that the Jobs Act was created to allow companies more choices. So at the end of the day, that's the most important thing you have to keep in the back of your mind is that you have choices in order to raise capital. So number one, the one great thing about this regulation, it is for both US-based companies and Canadian-based companies. So if you're a Canadian-based company with employees and your, gen your office is here and in the United States, you have the ability to use this exemption. This exemption was predominantly designed just for those types. Now, if you're from, from another jurisdiction outside of the US and Canada, um, you need to seek legal counsel, uh, reach out to us. We can put you in touch with lawyers to make you give you the step-by-step -step guide on how to meet those requirements. Now, so that's who it's for. Now, how do you go about it? Now, there are two ways that, that you can raise your capital and you can combine them. That's the beauty of this regulation. You, there is no do only do it this way and that's it. And I'll give you some examples of that. So number one, this regulation is a team sport. So remember that, team sport. So that means we all need to work together, meaning the lawyers, the auditors, the marketing firms, the PR firms, the media firms, the compliance providers, the broker dealers. So everybody's working together with the one objective to help you raise your capital. Okay, so don't forget that that's really important part because quite often that gets kind of lost in the shuffle when people start talking about who's better and all that. And that's not really what this is all about. Okay, so now that you've decided to use regulation, so how do you plan for it? Okay, so you got to go in with your eyes wide open. This is really important. So um, some of it has been published out there before and we're hoping that more information will become available to you to assist you. So one, there is a number of cost elements that you have to account for, and you have to really strategically plan for this. If you don't, your, your failure is, is, is going to be very high in this particular regulation. Because this is not like when you're raising capital from an accredited investor where there is a, a lot of uh, attention paid into um, the, you know, the, uh, the, the elements of the capital raise. The, the, the investor in Regulation A Plus is emotionally attached to your company. They see what you're working on. They see the change you're about to make. And for that reason, they want to be part of that journey. And I'm gonna give you examples of that really quickly as well. So that being said, so what do you need to plan? So realistically, if you're looking to raise capital, your legals and accounting are gonna be between uh, 60 and $80,000 US. So everything I'm providing you is in US dollars. Um, and then the real vast majority of the capital that you're gonna use for your capital rate is in marketing, PR, investor relations, and media. So you're gonna plan anywhere between 200,000 to half a million dollars. I'm not kidding. It, and some companies, the most successful, so have even spent a little bit more of that. So this is a this is a, a marketing way of fully compliant way of raising awareness about your opportunity uh, with providers who know what they're doing, um, and there are many of them that know how to put a messaging out there to attract that investor to come and invest in your company that is legally allowed to do. So um, so now that we put that out there, so now you know what you need to plan. And of course, you're gonna need a registered transfer agent. Uh, you're going to need um, a broker dealer who will charge you a small percentage fee to handle all the compliance and administrative capabilities. Uh, and that can range anywhere between one to 4%. Depend, and again, depending on how much work you want the broker dealer to do. And so that, that so that's the cost. So where can you go? So there are two ways. So companies and Regulation A+, it's always 
uh, an issue of do you have enough awareness in the market where people know you? So how many followers do you have on LinkedIn? How many do you have on Twitter? How many do you have on Facebook? Um, how many people are using your product? So that's your kind of internal crowd to kind of give you an idea um, how you can market to them and grab the uh, low hanging fruit, as they say. Otherwise, you need access to the other ecosystem, those that don't know who you are, and you need to combine those two together. So um, regardless of that, you have two choices. So one, you can do an offering right on your website. Yes, right on your website. On your website, you can, if once you've been approved by the SEC for your offering, you can put an invest button on your website. And that button allows that investor to go through the process of providing all the necessary details under the security regulation to be able to invest in your company. And of course, in the back end, there is the broker dealer making sure that it's, you know, they met all the requirements, ID, AML, and everything else. So that's number one on your own website. So that means all the marketing effort, all the traffic you're bringing is for your brand. So that's the, that, that's the thing. It's all about you at that moment. So that's one way. The second way is you can work with online issuance platforms, or some people call them equity crowdfunding platforms or capital market, whatever you want to call them. They're online platform companies like Start Engine, Crowdfunder, WeFunder, uh, Seed Invest. So there are many of these that have had great success in helping companies raise capital. So there is, you can do it yourself, or you can work alongside with an online platform. And then when you do that, um, you still need to, you still need to do the marketing because they will only be able to bring so much traffic to you. You still ultimately have to bring traffic uh, to the opportunity to bring awareness um, to your offering. And again, can you do both at the same time? Yes, we've had a number of clients uh, at Core Connects that have been doing both. Um, doing it on their own website and at the same time negotiating uh, with uh, online uh, platforms, issuance platforms to put their opportunities there. Uh, many of our clients also work with multiple marketing firms. So there is no one firm yet that, you know, so that, again, this is not, this one is bad, this is good. No, uh, I mean, the only thing that all these companies have in common is they have one great uh, lawyer that helped them with their offering and there's, a few of them that have been extremely well known in the industry. They um, and they're they're part of our ecosystem. So uh, the lawyers are you're you're going to have one, and of course you're going to have one auditor. Um, but in the marketing and the media and PR and all that, you you want a team sport to cover your your audience. Now there's been one additional loop uh, that's just come into light recently. Um, of course, the regulation has been where you can sell to any non-accredited investor worldwide. And of course, when the investor receives that security, it's a free trading security. So this is this is the best regulation anywhere in the world. And of course, companies in the past have sold their securities to investors in different countries. But certain countries now have stepped up and have indicated that in order for a company to sell securities in, in their particular country to non-accredited investors, uh, they also need a broker dealer. So that, that, that's not a barrier, that's not gonna, it just means that we now need to make sure that you have low, uh, broker dealers in each of the countries in which you want to sell securities to. So it, it's, not, it's not gonna be uh, uh, hamstringing your opportunity from not being able to uh, sell it in, you know, let's say you wanna sell US, Canada, Australia, UK, UAE, Singapore. There are tons of broker dealers worldwide, um, and obviously we have an ecosystem of 500 plus uh, broker dealers in different countries around the world um, that we bring into uh, to help companies. But I just want to put uh, I, again, I, I want to keep saying this over and over again because I think it's the most important thing of it all. The Jobs Act was created to help companies raise capital in the most cost efficient model possible way and that is really the end and there are no um, good or bad players there isn't ultimately they will all work together and that that's the the reality and that's what I like about it the the company will will start working with one marketing firm for a while to get it going and then another one because each of them have different access points so what do I mean by that in the marketing well some of them have access to purely email marketing 
Okay, and that's effective. Don't get me wrong. Getting eyeballs and all that is really good. But some then there are others who have very strategic relationships with family offices, institutional investors, um, where they are able to deliver messaging through newsletters. So again, um, this is totally different again. And then there are those who, once again, have a different marketing where they have access to millions of viewers and listeners. Uh, they are influencers in, in their own way, and they're leveraging that to bring attention to your opportunity. So whoever you are, whether you are a uh, B2B, B2C, whether you're real estate, uh, cannabis, technology, it's the A to Z. Another question that I get asked a lot, Oscar, um, do you think my company would be good for uh, Regulation A+. Plus? Look, um, I'm certainly not the right person. Nobody is. Nobody really can give you um, say no or yes to some have biases that the only companies that should be using this should be a business to consumers. I remember in 2015, that was the real big thing out there. They, uh, they, some of the experts were saying that the, 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 the most successful companies that will utilize this exemption are those who have a consumer side to it. I totally disagree with that. We've seen evidence of the, uh, otherwise. So uh, in other words, it, it's, it's how you approach it how you plan for it, and do you have the right partners to help you with it. So it doesn't matter what it is you do, you're doing a capital raise. Every capital raise has an emotional side to it and has an investment side to it, and you need to combine them both. Now, if you're not able to get your messaging across into that to, to the audience, well, that's a different story altogether, and that's a marketing issue, and that that's not a capital raising issue. So it, whether it's an accredited or non-accredited investor, you still got to sell it. You still got to put all that emotion out there. What is it that you're doing? So whether you're, you know, you're solving a problem with autism, or uh, you know, you're bringing out a brand new pump for hearts, or you're bringing a brand new vodka or a different cannabis, whatever it may be, uh, we have really we have seen A to Z. All right. So what's the final piece that you got to remember regarding Regulation A plus, which is for me, it's very personal because for some of you who have been following me for over the years, I wrote a book, an ebook uh, that I gave away in 2015 um, to over 30 million people. Uh, it was available in English, Spanish, and Mandarin. It's still there. Um, and it was a book about equity crowdfunding. I truly believe that equity crowdfunding has been the the, the, the catalyst to all this has been the, the reason why we are having this conversation today. But one of those chapters in the book that I wrote about was that we cannot look at our shareholders um, through the same uh, way that we have been in, in historically. Historically, we look at shareholders as they put money. Oh, my God, I got to report to them. They're a thorn. You know, I look at shareholders more of the ambassadors. I look at them. Look at that. These people gave us our, their money. They give us their money to be part of our journey. So why not empower them to become part of the journey? And companies that do this correctly, oh my goodness! I mean, uh, I get. I mean, look at companies like, you know, um, uh, Brew Dog Breweries, who they don't call them shareholders; they call them equity punks. Uh, I mean, punks. I mean, that that is a cool nickname. Now they're they're holders. They're they're part of everything. They have an, an individual totally dedicated uh, to their to to the community to make sure that they're fully engaged um, when it, you know being part of any uh, uh, marketing activities, launching of new products. So if think about how much time and effort we spend to get customers and then when we got have them how much time we spend to do advertising getting them involved well this is no different it's all about the mind it's about you changing the way you look at these individuals and when you do you're going to be successful like brew dog breweries elegance brands tasty equity legion m legion works golden seed and many many others who are seeing a different way of looking at this and this is probably the one piece that many, many companies just did not plan for. But there are experts out there who can help you at the beginning to make sure that you have a road path to that. Technology could only help you deliver it, but technology cannot help you build that brand. That's you, that's all you. And think about it, there's nothing more powerful 
then having 30,000 brand ambassadors, it's the dream come true for any company, 30,000 brand uh, ambassadors who put money in your company, who now want to go to Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, anywhere and tell the world they want to share in your company or that, that they're promoting your company on your behalf. I mean, this is really, really powerful, but it takes the, the strategy has to be right from the top to make sure that, so it's all part of the, the evolution of using the regulation. And yes, some people would say, well, Oscar, I don't want to have 30,000 or 100,000 or a million shareholders in my private company. That's right. This is not for everybody. This is not for everybody. And if you have the vision where you're going to raise money from this group and you're going to put them all under a shell company and that's it and you know, you'll report to them once a year, good luck with that. This is not this regulation. You need to look at this in a, in a, in a very different light. And if you do, you will see the full potential of it. You know, we, we have our upcoming client called Bullet ID. I mean, this is a perfect company that um, having people who believe in their product, also being uh, shareholders in the company, and also to be brand ambassadors of what they're doing. That, that, that is the, um, you know, the killer app per se, as everybody says. So keeping those things in mind, um, obviously there's more things we'll talk about as time goes by, but hopefully I've given you a little bit more to chew on regarding Regulation A+. If you have any questions, just go to www.coreconnects.io forward slash reggae. Look forward to talking to you all soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.